This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Awesome Cast. It's time to get geeky, get techy. Awesome Cast 316, a DTA. Don't trust Android. We're going to get right into it. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter is here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. So many great techy things happening in the Pittsburgh area. I can't wait to tell you about some of them. But with me, back in the studio, it is John Chichilla. It is so good to be back. As the, as the weather gets cooler, it gets cooler in the in the studio. <laughs> yes, there is no separation <laughs> between the weather outside and the weather inside. That's how we keep it real, real hot in the <laughs> summertime. <laughs> but anyways, like I said, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out, awesomecast.net, where you can subscribe to the show. You can find us on your iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or over on video versions on YouTube. And, uh, of course, over on Facebook, we are uh, posting the videos up over there as well. And uh, uh, live at live.sorgatronmedia.com via YouTube Live. Uh, so please uh, uh, check us out there and join us here Tuesdays at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we do the stream. We have a chat room. Our buddies Crazy Kraus and Wheels are in the chat room. I'm sorry you have to use your shoot name, Wheels. That's the YouTube policy. Uh, but anyways, uh, but still a really great, great way for you guys to join us and become part of the show. Tell us your awesome thing of the week while you're in there. Respond to things. I swear I'll attempt to pay as much attention in there. Uh, uh, Chilla has his own monitor with the chat room as well. Uh, so we, we can both keep an eye on what's going on out there. So please distract us with uh, uh, your corrections and everything as we go. And we'll bring them into the show. You can also support the show on Patreon. Patreon.com slash awesome. Thank you to our wonderful executive producer on there right now at the $5 level, Mike Fedor of the Mike Fedor Show, at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. Go check him out. Thank him for being a part of the awesome cast and helping us bring it to you over uh, this this period here uh, and helping grow the show. You can become a part of it, become our boss, as little become part of the awesome army and help the awesome cast grow. And, uh, and 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 we'll be uh, growing that here. Um, we got some awesome interviews coming up, including the awesome chat this week coming up at awesomecast.net. And that's because people like this and uh, 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 show that they want these things to happen. Uh, that we are uh, we're going back and bringing back the awesome chat in in, a, in an interesting, different way. Hopefully, uh, we'll see how long we can keep it up. Uh, uh, as far as that goes. Also, thanks to uh, RiversEdgePGH.com, our friends that uh, uh, support the show by showing the show or listening the show or <laughs> <laughs> listening, showing the audio waves of the show. Uh, RiversEdgePGH.com. We're uh, aired on there 8 a.m. Thursday mornings after Funny Money, and we will also be a part of the upcoming pod crawl in Millvale, PA. Uh, coming up on September 30th, which I'm sure, no coincidence, is also International Podcast Day. So a lot of fun stuff going on there. Go to Rivers Edge, pgh.com, look up the Rivers Edge over on Facebook, and we have it linked as well. We've been sharing it. Uh, we'll be uh, the we'll be down at Smokey's Tavern uh, down in Millville at 9.45 p.m. that night. A lot of great stuff. The Mike Sasson Show, Drinking Partners. Uh, one of the Drinking Partners joined us on a panel over at PodCamp. Uh, that you can check out PodCamp Pittsburgh's uh, YouTube page, uh, River Talk, Bold Pittsburgh, and Ya Jag Off. All uh, uh, we're sharing the bills with that night all across Millville. We're going to be podcasting is taking over a town, quite literally that night. I'm looking forward to that. Should there be drinking on the Awesome Cast? I don't know. I don't know. I don't there, know if, if there a should be. Awesome Drunk Cast should be a thing. But uh, <laughs> she said we can, won't. We won't get drunk. We will just drink. We will just drink. Um, but in mass, uh, in mass quantities. <laughs> but anyways, let's get into it with our awesome things of the week. I, I didn't check. Is yours a, a non-Apple thing? Mine is non-Apple thing. Let's and, do and the, mine's probably going to be a little short. Let's go ahead. Let's go so, ahead with so Chillis. Let's, let's run with this. So, it, um, 
if I can request that you bring up the link. Working and on. for those at home, there's a video in the lower left. We could we could talk about the device itself real quick. So I, as as we're probably going to discuss here momentarily, iOS 10 is launched. There's you get when that comes, you get a massive amount of updates. One of the things I noticed is VMware updated their Horizon client. It said now with support for the SwiftPoint GT wireless mouse, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is my iPad. And it has support for a mouse. I've seen other companies do this with uh, very specific devices, or they actually create a second app for the phone that turns the phone into a trackpad. Um, all very cool tech. This is a small mobile mouse with truly natural touch gestures. So I was pretty impressed with the way they executed this. If you're if you're used to kind of touching and swiping across a touch screen. Um, and you have a Windows device and you're, you're, you don't want to have to switch from mouse to screen to mouse. You don't want smudges. Um, they kind of have a way that you actually take the mouse and tilt it on its side. And I think it has some different click options that allow you to then take this device and kind of mimic or turn it into kind of a touch response on the device. Um, some of the other features, it, 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 it talks about it being more ergonomic. It's it's looks extremely small. It's it instead of the grasping something a, a little bigger like a full size mouse. It's really only meant for kind of you to grab it with three fingers, almost like a little claw. I like how the one example I actually shows it next to you, like this is how you hold a pencil. This is how you hold this, and how it kind of it kind of yeah uh, really kind of relates. Yeah, and it, I, I was impressed. It comes with out of the box full support for all the Windows eight and ten touch. Panning, flicking, zoom, uh, back in the day, the charms menu, application switching. It's rechargeable uh, via Bluetooth, and it's Bluetooth 4. Um, and there's also a USB receiver. This is something I've been seeing happening more and more with a lot of different mice, um, which surprises me because you would think more devices would be picking up Bluetooth. Um, a lot of companies may block Bluetooth on the device or you may not have the appropriate drivers. So this kind of gets around it with the 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 dongle. I see this on a lot of Logitech devices. The Logitech device I reviewed a couple weeks back um, has both Bluetooth and, and dongle support. Um, I like the fact that it's that it's rechargeable. Um, I don't have to worry about carrying extra batteries with me. It, it does offer some configuration with, with different what you can do with the button. Um, again, what I found interesting was, is at least VMware, is starting to pick up and support this in their app on iOS. So kind of taking it beyond, and it also, uh, it doesn't say it on the Amazon site, but it definitely works. Oh, it does say it there uh, on Android. Um, here's where I have the problem. It's extremely expensive <laughs> at $150. So uh, that that's where I'm having, I haven't, I haven't purchased the device. The, the, the thing that I really liked about it, and, and, and if, if you get a chance it, and, and you watch the actual video for the, the SwiftPoint GT wireless ergonomic mouse, um, it you can use it, from what I can tell, effectively on the bottom, like right hand, well, I'm right handed, so I would use it on the bottom right hand corner, but on like the bottom corner of your laptop. So it doesn't require a whole lot of space from the way they're showing it used, whether you want to use it kind of as your generalized mouse or and you want to kind of tilt it to use the touchscreen type features. Um, so I think this would be great for planes. It would be great on trains um, in a coffee shop if you can't if you can't really spread out on a large table. But the, the hard thing I'm having or the hard problem I'm having is wrapping my head around one hundred and forty nine dollars. You can get it in two days. But a hundred, it, it seems like it's pretty heavily priced at, at that price point. It does have a four out of five star review, which is good. Um, but again, I, I, I don't know. You, you're kind of on the go, always working. Is this something of interest to you, or nope, nope, like nope? Because no um, I live for the touchpad. Okay. Um, I am like sometimes the laptop. Because the laptop right now is the workhorse for things so like if something needs rendered or something mm -hmm. that's the thing that gets left behind and then i have to go grab the asus laptop right and always i'm just just you trackpad know, yeah trackpad is just just 
devastating compared to this. Now, that might be nice for, for something like that when I need that replacement uh, kind of situation. But um, I don't know. It, it's uh, nah, this, this, this doesn't really fit for me. But I, I can definitely see the appeal of it. Uh, my, my wife actually always has a wireless mouse with her laptop. Mm-hmm. Cause partially, again, because of the junk trackpad that, that comes with the Windows 10 laptop, right? Um, the ones we've had, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's... This seems like the right kind of thing. I don't know me with my big mitts if that's going to work too well. Um, can you hold a pencil? I can hold a. I, I don't do it as often as I used to, but but I can hold a pencil. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, um, um, but no, no. I think I can certainly see in in certain travelers uh, situations where this could work out pretty well. I'd like to see how it would work in because the the one part that I don't I'm not big on the trackpad for is like your Photoshop or Fine Line trying to select into a what's that trying to select into into a photo um that's where i could definitely see kind of that mouse aspect um but i, I don't know i I'm, I'm i would be interested to try it out i'm just not interested in spending 150 dollars to try it out that's an expensive <laughs> uh experiment right there yeah certainly uh well uh my awesome thing of the week is of course ios 10 you guys gave me the hot tip last week about the public beta and that they had the uh, the, the, the final version, which is, as we as we write this, I'm starting to get the digital, um, uh, what the heck do they call it? Because it, it comes up as a certain thing on my Pebble watch or somewhere else. Um, the, di- the digital touch message from uh, iMessage is popping up. Uh, so I can tell all my friends who are getting it and, and playing with the new <laughs> iMessage. Uh, but it's pretty fantastic <laughs> but uh I, so so everything we've been talking about uh the 3d touch with notifications is is yeah it's a big deal it really is a big deal it really does change the way that you deal with messages the fact that you can 3d touch on that message and interact with that message without going anywhere it has sped up my reaction time and my willing to respond to a, a message actually um the biggest pain in the butt was always all right, that's a Hangout. Okay, that's a Facebook message. I guess I'm going to have to go in the app and deal with this. I'll do it later, right? So so then those things munch up until I sit down at, at a computer or I'm in Facebook and say, okay, yeah, I'll respond to these, you know. Um, which, that doesn't work for messaging, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so so I, I'm enjoying that bit of it. Um, I still wish, and I figured some of the apps like Facebook and Twitter uh, may have more responsiveness as things it becomes released and, and they roll out their implementations. It, it took a while for them to, to um, pick up on live photos in Facebook. Right. right. Just like, just, and, and I'm not, I'm not trying to play the fence of iOS or Android here, but it, the same thing was true for 360 degree photos. There, there's a lot of things that, you know, they definitely take their time and make sure they do it right. I think we'll see those definitely over time um, on your iMessages comment. Have you played around with, a lot of the stickers i didn't or... get too crazy with it because i knew not a lot of people would have them and i wondered how they looked which apparently they just look like that you're sending them an image like the digital touch things mm-hmm. uh, which if you don't okay so so basically um when you get to the bottom of your iMessages, messages you have you know there's there's a kind of a smaller messaging window you have a camera button you have what looks like a heart and two fingers and then you have like an app store icon. The heart and two fingers is like a kind of touch situation where you can draw something and send it. And then that shows up as an animation on the other side or it just shows up as an image if they don't have iOS 10. So okay. like that, that's still because again, I was sent out to my wife and saying, you know, what are you receiving over there? Uh, app wise, I, I haven't the gifts. Everybody's doing gifts. Like oh, there's yeah. no question not to do gifts now because now there's 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 GIF installation in there um giphy is a part of it 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 looks like it just got updated with access for it um i thought it was interesting so i added classic mac and then there's like some recent stuff i I accidentally turned my phone sideways today when i was walking and the handwriting uh, option popped up Mm -hmm. i'm like i didn't even know that was a thing like i'm walking down the street and i'm like stop look at this uh (laughs) but uh yeah but yeah it's um it, it, it's been pretty cool, and and again, it really kind of I like again I like seeing that this is something that you can send to your Android friends. Like they'll receive something, right? Yeah, they will, will definitely receive something. It's not going to look as flashy as it is for us. I haven't seen anything 
where um i haven't seen anything where like the entire screen like rains confetti like we saw in the previews or anything like that mm-hmm. but but i do I, like i'm this is i message is definitely stepped up in this and now it's like well i don't really want to go to facebook message anymore because this is the fun stuff and the people they do the fun stuff with on 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 messaging are all on the apple platform for the most part so you know I, that that works out really well for that so the one thing i was wondering was you're supposed to be able to like apply a sticker to like a prior message really yeah, and I saw it. I, so where I saw it was, um, that was me. Oh, that was you. Yeah. So where I saw it was, you could like put so them. This one, he, I got, I got a text from a random phone number, and apparently, is that... see how I put the question mark up there on your on your message? Okay, so for for, for those to see, uh, your phone number is on here. Oh, I guess wow. a little bit. Um, but no, yeah, you added, so you added a, yes, who's this? And there's like a little question mark icon on there. How'd you do that? So you tap and hold on the message and it brings up heart, thumb up, thumb down, ha ha ha, exclamation point question. One of the things that you're supposed to do, and I'm not a hundred percent exactly sure how is you're supposed to be able to sticker like your response I just put Mario sticker in there. You're supposed to be able to, I think, oh. sticker. Oh yeah, you hold in. Uh, you hold on the on on your message. Um, like you hold it, like you're getting rid of an app instead of press, mm-hmm. and it pops up a little bit of an interface on top of, um, um, that. Yeah, but one of the things that I thought you were supposed to be able to do, like I said, was attach a, a one a, a custom sticker to each one on the mario stickers they show mario like on top of the message and all kinds of different ones that's where that's where i was a little confused where did you get the mario stickers i gotta get these mario stickers so, oh, oh oh from mario run okay okay all right make, yeah there's a there's a mario of course there is because that's the that so that's the new interesting thing if you go in to, and hit the little app store looking icon and then hit the four dots in the lower left hand corner mm-hmm. it will show you all of the apps that now have automatic interaction with iMessage. Right. And a lot of them, what you'll notice is as the apps have been updating over the last day, a lot of apps are now shipping out of the box with iMessage content capability. So things like Yelp, Fandango, IMDB, Giphy, um, Gif Keyboards, uh, Starwalk 2, Evernote, um, Mario Run has a, has a sticker collection. So, there's it's it's per, to me pretty darn cool um the way you can kind of provide reactions as well as tie into different apps um a little bit later in the show if you have time there's one app in particular that was definitely of interest to me but i don't want to detract from the, the generalized ios 10 talk no and, and otherwise so so i i did find myself saying okay other than iMessage and the notification screen what else is there that really sticks out from this um, I was pretty impressed with the new, uh, portion of the clock where, um, you know, where you usually do your alarms and everything, but there's a bedtime and you can actually say, Hey, I want eight hours. Hey, I want to go to bed at 1130 every night. You know, let me know. And it will notify me, Hey, you should probably go to bed now. Um, and there's like this interesting soft, uh, there's a soft, um, 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 waking that it does in the morning too. Um, now I set it for a couple mornings and I have a weird schedule. Like tonight I'm up pretty late because of these shows. Mm-hmm. So I let myself, you know, let myself have the extra hour or two in the morning. Uh, and it's still waking me up at seven thirty. <laughs> I just haven't set all the days right yet. <laughs> when I have to do that too. I, for me, and I haven't played around with the sleep portion, but I do like my Monday, Wednesday, Friday is different from my Tuesday, Thursday. Sometimes Wednesday has to be kind of lumped in with the Tuesday, Thursday right, time. And then it's like right. you, you either set your Monday, when, you either set your Tuesday, Thursday alarm clock to include Wednesday or or whatever. And it's like, oh, I forgot to turn that back or, oh, I forgot to, to reset it. So, yeah, I run into the same kind of problem. I mean, a lot of times, you know, people have a fairly 
set schedule. The most normal people have a set schedule. I get up at 7 a.m. every day, go to my thing, go to work. I have to go to bed by X at the night, so it's, it's enough for everything. Um, yeah, even right now I have it set for Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, seems to make sense for the most part, except that it's all been changing. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's been... It, and also, how smart. And geez, I can't believe it took them this long. It's a, it's a white on black interface now for your clocks. Because when you're setting your alarm at right before bed, you have the lights out. I'm like, oh, I got still on for tomorrow. And you have a jet flashing white background for the alarm popping up. I think that that's that was super smart with that as well. well one of the things that I think is going to cause a lot of people grief, um, and I don't know how you use your phone. So when you typically pick up your phone, do you hit the power button to unlock to, to turn the screen on, or do you hit the home button? To turn it's home the button. On? So you home button. Hey, home button. So now you got to. Click. So when you raise up your phone now, and you click, a lot of times it just does the fingerprint scan, and you have to click again. Oh, oh no, 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 no! I've adjusted. I've adjusted to the fingernail method. Okay. Uh, I like that. That that is or the side of the finger kind of situation. But also now, when you pick it up, it automatically pops up. Pops up. So that that's helpful too. It gives you one less thing to do. Like I'm still find myself pressing it as I pick it up and realizing I didn't have to do that sort of situation but uh no i i think it's uh i i and that's a nice little touch right um and i know nothing new if you're an android person i'm sure depending on what you have um but uh but yeah so there is just just for those of you who find that kind of and i can't find the setting now there is a way in the accessibility settings to set it where the first click will unlock unlock um, with the fingerprint sensor. The other thing that I found was there's a way and, and I, I, I'm drawing a blank on where it's actually at in the settings under accessibility. You can now set a setting that allows you to trickle, triple click your home button and it will automatically fire up the camera and zoom it in. So if you have a hard time, I, I hear a lot of people saying, you know, I'm having a hard time reading something like a menu in a restaurant because the print's too small. So, or, or the ingredients on the side of a, of a can or something like that. So you can actually set an accessibility option that will allow you to, to triple click the home button. It automatically launches the camera and zooms it in. I thought it was a pretty neat feature for, for people that it may have. And that's under accessibility. Yeah. Um, so I thought, that, like, like I said, I thought that was, that was a pretty cool feature they added in. A lot of these set, like a lot of these accessibility features that I think a lot of people use, there's a lot more in there, so I would definitely, if you're if you're interested in kind of switching the way a interface kind of works, or oh, that or, is cool. I turned <laughs> it on. Um, wow, yeah, it's a it's a whole different uh, camera interface too, where it's it's you know you have a kind of a zoomer at the bottom, and then there's still like some lock and flash buttons, but at the bottom it looks different than the normal camera. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So I, th I thought it was a neat. I thought it was definitely yeah. a neat feature. Um, I am having trouble getting used to having to swipe left to to get to my camera. Like remember, oh, instead that. of swipe up, because it used to be swipe up from the corner, right? Mm -hmm. um, do we still have? I have not noticed that. Do we still have? Um, oh, I guess we do. We do have in the other corner the the kind of app recommendation. Yes, going on. Okay, I do see that now. I just hadn't noticed it with everything else new that's been happening with this thing. Um, but no, it's been pretty fantastic. So 3D Touch, because I realized, I'm like, man, I haven't really been using 3D Touch in the first year of using my success, right? Now it's like, okay, it's it's here, right? Like, you got a little taste of it. Now you have a fully functional, got-to-have thing. Now here's my question with this. So, so that's what the 3D Touch is for us. What about everybody with the iPhone six and later? Because I, you know, I've heard it's a long press. It's just a long press, just like you're you're doing anything else. Actually, let me. Let no, you can't. I mean, like three D touch on apps, like on the front panel, like where if you want a sub menu, mm -hmm. that's not going to work. But for most of the the three D touch stuff, it's it's a long. Usually, it's a long press. Now I wonder if we'll see an accelerated cycle out of the older devices to try to I think they just don't have I think they just don't have the extra functionality. 
I, yeah. it, it, it's a reason to upgrade. Oh, I can just press this this way and this happens. But as an app, but as an app developer, do you not do that? Well, I, you don't want to limit think you what look people at, can and can't. So do there's no app. 3D touch on the SE, right? Correct. Uh, so that that's a detriment there. Uh, iPad doesn't have 3D touch yet, I don't believe. No. Uh, hopefully the next version, I suppose. Uh, do you have? Yeah, boy, I think I think it becomes a additional feature because the apps i haven't seen anything where it really pops out on the app itself mm-hmm. it's it's and i think this is a thing that's going to take another year before it becomes a functional um ingrained way you use things in the apps it it, it this is still apple educating us on hey look you can do this this is a new you know, the mouse is a new thing, and this is how you use it, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. We, everybody got baby stepped into that, right? Uh, this is a new thing. Oh, did you know you can press in and do this? And you know, if you never remember it, just like that first year, if I never remember it, I could push in on uh, on messages and just send a text to my wife directly from there. I didn't. I didn't get less out of the phone functionality, yeah. right? I just didn't get additional out of. It. You know, it's like I keep putting things on my widget screen because I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll be able to want to make a card out of Trello out of nowhere or hit the button so I can just hit, get ways to go home. I have never remembered to do that because it hasn't worked in. It hasn't worked mm-hmm. into my brain yet. Right. Um, I don't think that's the place I go to get to that, you know, on here. But it is the place where I go to check in on Swarm to to check the weather and in, 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 uh, weather underground, to check uh, when the train's coming on the transit app. Like, that is a thing that it's a, this is the way I do this. Okay, here we go. Because um, there is like, a little bit of, you know, personal training, I think, mm-hmm. on a lot of those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, no, I think it's another, maybe by the 7S, because you'll have how many cycles of phones out there? Yeah. That it becomes more of a thing. And then it's going to be the very explicit, this is a high-end phone app. And by the way, look at all these things we can do. So I, I, I do like a lot of times, like even like the Instagram, you could immediately go to the picture section versus going into your timeline. And then but it again, does definitely does save me time. Right. And and that's that goes back to, you know, widgets being on that. I am heavily, heavily using widgets. I am happy they're not. And I maybe I'm a little bit different on the Android side. So I do use a fair amount of widgets on my Android tablet and a, and a few on the phone. They're typically on a page or pages all to themselves. I don't mm-hmm. have them intermixed with all my other icons. Um, and I kind of like, and that's how this kind of works for me too. And it's not coming from widgets on iOS. That's why I did it that way on Android. I had widgets on Android long before iOS had anything like that. Um, but having them all in a consolidated location to me seems like it's, it's much easier to get there and get to what I'm finding. I definitely have them prioritized top to bottom on what I use the most. And then I actually have kind of like what I use the most. And then I actually put the next amount of stuff at the very bottom because I find myself like quickly flicking because it'll scroll all the way to the bottom real quick. Mm -hmm. So then and then I have the okay. sometimes I use these kind of in the middle. So so widgets, I'm very happy with them. They're very responsive. Um, unfortunately I haven't gotten to see kind of that responsiveness on the watch yet. I have, I've yet to update my Apple watch. Um, it's at home charging. So the moment I arrive, I can kick off that install. Uh, thanks AJ for, for the three hour warning. Um, but yeah, I'll get home and do that tonight. So, um, I, I, I wanted to point out cause as I, so I was just doing a little quick, uh, Instagram story cause I like to throw it, uh, throw some in during the show, but our friend Mike Wojcik, who I think he's been on an early, early episode of the show, um uh whenever Ginny gets or Jane Pitt Pitt girl however you want to refer to her uh whenever uh she gets new new software and there's just a screen of all the notifications of all the digital touch messages on his her no, his <laughs> notification screen and in the middle of it is, is a I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh so you can tell if you're getting I mean it, and and this is one of those things where like are you in that case are you starting to like every you're seeing are you starting to get messages as your your let's just call them the normal friends uh not yet not yet but i think because my normals are like weekend updaters (laughs) 
They're not. They're not. <laughs> Tell me about your normals, Chilla. <laughs> My normals are weekend updaters. They're not day of updaters. Um, and I'll be honest with you, because what burned them was, I think, iOS seven. There's a lot of framework changes, I think, in iOS seven. That's when. Yeah, like that, that's when like there was a eight. Bit. It was it maybe it was eight. The UI rewrite and a, and a bunch of other stuff was, I think, in... Seven was the visual change. Okay. Right? So back and, then, seven... and then eight was when we got, like, extensions. So so back back in the visual change and the framework changes, a number of utilities that are used around my house and by other normals, I know. Um... As I, <laughs> I know how reductive that sounds. <laughs> like, but I'm kind of liking where we're going but it this. But it broke... It actually... You know, we always warn about the betas. Launch day actually broke a fair number of utility apps that took the the smaller and some even larger developers many, many weeks to fix. Um, so I think because of that, I think most a lot of the people that I know have said, you know, I'm going to give it three or four days and see if. The day before or the day of, there's an app update. And if there's not an app update, then I'm going to go check the reviews in the app store. Because some people are starting to become more and more dependent on the apps. It used to be, oh, if it breaks the phone, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do anything. Well, now with Skype and everything else, I can still make a phone call even if the phone dialer wouldn't work. Now it's, did it thrash my battery? And are there applications that i use like if i could and this is gonna i'm gonna sound like a complete jerk if i could no longer start my car from my phone i might lose my mind (laughs) it has become so routine and like if if i can't remote start my car from my phone to get the inside of the car to a decent temperature like my head explodes. Like I get in the car angry. I get in, I get angry with myself. If I for sometimes forget to start the car, like five minutes before I'm going to arrive because I can do it from my phone. You're on these 95 degree, 8,000% humidity days. I just want to get in the car to be cold, be cool. I don't want to get in the car, turn on the air conditioning and then be blown with more hot air. So, so like things like that, I, I'm even skeptical now. I actually use an, a, a different device. I hit four or five apps to make sure that they work in the beta. And then I load beta on my device. And I think because of the, those types of things, I think that's why people are... I think you're still going to see quick adoption. You're going to see that hockey stick ramp up of people, especially with things like this. Mm-hmm. But I think there are people that are going to be like, well, let, let me make sure applications one, two, and three work because I use them on a daily basis. All right. On that point, I just put that quote out on Twitter, by the way. <laughs> if I can't remote start my car with my phone, my head might explode. All right. I just want to give a shout out. We'll have a couple stories before after we do something very special here. Um, but um, in the meantime, I, I check out our friends, Slice on Broadway, feeding us, um, um, helping us... Uh, uh, Deal with life's problems like not being able to start our car remotely with our phones. Uh, friends at SliceOnBroadway.com supporting the show for a good while. Good friends. Hey, they joined um, our other friends of the show, Bite Me Bakery, up at uh, Taste of Beachview this past week. So I hope uh, some of you in the Beachview area got up to check that out. Um, they're down here in Beachview right along the tracks, which is going to have a train very soon. Next week, I think. Next week. Next week. They're hanging the, the, is it the, they're hanging the lines back up. Um, right now, I'm making traffic uh, again a little difficult, but still. Sorry, not next week, the week after. twenty. Is it, I heard okay. it's 25th, 26th. Damn, I thought it was next week. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was like late next week. Wow. But anyways, um, but uh, go check them out. They're there as well as Carnegie PA down on Main Street or down at PNC Park. And our good friend Matt Mike from, uh, I almost said the Bronx. He's not from the Bronx anymore. From Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, was in town checking that out with our friend uh, Matt in the Main Street Media, Matt Carlins. Uh, check them out. Good friends. Awesome people, great pizza, sliceonbroadway.com, uh, uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcast with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good long time now. PJ underscore slice on the Twitter or slice on Broadway on Facebook 
and the Instagrams. All right, Chilla, what is going on out there? So uh, we were we were talking about it briefly before the show. Note seven, obviously. Yes. Are we, you we, okay? We may. Are may you th- okay? So my device is affected. Oh no! So I am impacted. I gotta. I gotta work to like, get well, now, a they, swap. They recalled everything. Across but the it's board. not. It's not. So they did recall everything, but it is not a consumer recall. So it's right. Not. They officially unofficially recalled yeah. every phone. Okay. Yes. Like, and if you can't, you cannot bring that onto a plane on. Yes. <laughs> they, they're very, very across the board saying, "No, you're not doing that." Uh, so yours was a model that came, was sourced from Korea. the prob Korea. Whatever. So if you turn the device over, there's a and you need you may need the triple click on a, from an iPhone to be able to read it, <laughs> but it will say like assembled or made Ooh, in. Nice bringing the tip <laughs> around there. Also, how first world that you got an iPhone to check the check Samsung device. <laughs> Jeez. It, it, on the bottom line, underneath like the the different logos for that it was it passed FCC and whatnot. Yeah. The bottom right hand corner, it's going to say made in or assembled in. Um, assembled in China, they use Chinese batteries. Not a problem. Um, I've heard Singapore is okay. Uh, Korea is not. Um, so, and mine says uh, uh, made in Korea. So, um, I do have an affected device. I'm working with Samsung to get that swapped out. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, and of course, you don't obtain through normal means. Right. I don't even obtain for, even the iPhone. I just bought outright. I'm, I'm not on next plans or payment plans or contracts or I, I do like the freedom. I, I have no fear in switching carriers if I had to weekly to mm-hmm. obtain a best price. So mm-hmm. um, that enables me to move on the fly. It also enables me to take take advantage of some other some other deals with with a lot of the carriers that that may go unnoticed if you're. If, you're, if they're trying to obviously sell you something and they want to make money, they're probably not going to tell you. Always be upfront 110% about, you know, we can actually put you on this other plan that's $10 cheaper. Not only are you not paying $20 a month for your device extra until you pay it off, we can get you on this other plan because it's a, it's a different plan. It's not part of a next plan structure. It's not part of this plan structure. I, and um, that's one of those things, like, it's it's nice to be able to do that. But understand, you're going to have a have to have a thousand dollars in your pocket right. in order to do that with with an iPhone. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm on a next plan myself, and and then like that little itch comes in the back of my head is like, wow, I might be far enough in my next plan, I might be able to get the new iPhone and switch this out. No, 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 I'm not doing it, not doing it, not doing it. <laughs> you so, know, I have to talk myself out of it, you know, because I don't want to uh, remain tethered to AT and T in that way. Uh, and and I, I don't know. So I have another year to figure it out, mm-hmm. which you know I'm. Cool. I'm not. I'm not. Definitely not fawning over the seven. But anyways, so uh, so back to the Samsung. So uh, definitely working to get that swapped out. Um, obviously, hardware is not necessarily easy to come by. That's that's been fixed and remediated. Um, contact your carrier if you have an affected device. Be careful when charging it. Most recommendations are shut the device off. It the it, the heat up exploding burning whatever um typically it appears when charging mm-hmm. um so keep an eye on it when you're charging the lower powered wireless chargers i use one definitely do not heat up the device nearly as much um there are chemicals and i'm just giving out a fair warning for people there are chemicals in that battery that not only will you be burned by heat but you'll be burned by chemical um don't take your singed phone and then because it's cooled down put it in your pocket to take it to the store um put it in something else don't because it's going to bleed through your clothes because it then is you can get a chemical burn. well it's not battery acid right, right? It's, yeah. it's 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 a different kind of chemical but still a severe like it's i mean we are carrying and it's a pretty interesting like kind of revel like like thought that's like and you've been doing this for how long you're carrying not a you know, maybe those ones are, you know, a, a small bomb, like the capacity of a small bomb in your pocket, right? So, so, so how, and Samsung realizes they can't get, there were, there was a theory of there was going to be a kill switch and Samsung was going to deactivate 
mm-hmm. all of the Note mm-hmm. 7s out there. That's not true. Right. Um, what I did hear is they are going to issue a software patch. Um, they they feel that if they keep the device at 60% or below charge, um, that this will not, that you will not have the, the catch fire. And they can explosion. do that in software. They can do it through software. The, the thing is, is now, now you're seven, note seven. Here's, here's the patch. Note seven, now with 40% less battery life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, which, which, yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, it, it take the device back, swap it out. Um, I think even I've heard, I think it was Leo Laporte said, you know, T-Mobile, one of the options is hold on to your device, keep using it until we can get you a replacement. He's um, changed that, by the way. Oh, has he? He has <laughs> changed that 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 thought <laughs> since. Um, and he has a Chinese battery. He does. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he does. He's T-Mobile and they were exclusively Chinese. Right, right. Um, so like to the point where I think he's, getting an iphone for whatever trip he's going on okay. or something so um i know we all get so like 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 we're in on on, on his travel plans because he <laughs> talks about them on every podcast right um but no it, i think it sucks for sam or samsung at that point um but uh yeah it was a nice phone it was definitely a nice phone it's and, be- and it's regardless, a beautiful phone yeah and, and either way they're taking a hit on this um be it you know financially for the replacements or or in the press and everything like that. Um, I, but, uh, thankfully, they're. I think generally, I think that hurts trust a little bit, mm-hmm. right? So, but hey, you know, I, I guess in comparison, iPhone had antenna gate and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they can always come around. You got a free bumper. You got a free bumper, man. <laughs> got a free bumper. Um, my S series didn't come with a free bumper, but so chilla. I had a very interesting time uh, yesterday with. A certain <clears throat> company in here in Pittsburgh that has uh, uh, gone to roots and um, and you know oh no I can throw my chair on it now <laughs> uh, oh you got a shirt something yeah I was hiding this from you yeah there you go there you go I don't know if they can hold wow. on the camera so okay so I had the opportunity um, to be a stringer on a video uh, 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 project we'll say. Um, it was with Mashable. That's all I knew going into it. And I, I heard a little bit what it is. So they had a media day for Uber. And, of course, you know, the I think I got the Advanced Technology Center, I think it's called here in, in town, which is actually over by 31st Street Bridge, over by where all the movie studio warehouses are and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so they had a media day because um, as of when this is out, um, they're actually going to start rolling out the self-driving car program. Um, that is um, what it was today. So it's the 14th, uh, uh, September 14th, officially they're doing this. Um, if you are an Uber user in, in the Pittsburgh area, uh, you will um, um, you will be able to uh, enroll or have already. You probably received an email by now if you qualified for this this beta. Basically, you opted in at some point that said you would like to you know get get updates for something like this. I, I'm not I'm a Lyft rider, so <laughs> <laughs> I've taken Uber once, so I haven't seen this. A lot. Um, so, and basically, um, when you when you call, uh, there's a chance that if you just get a Uber X, that one of them may be the self driving car. So you, we've all seen it. We've seen the pictures of it. We've seen it on the streets here in Pittsburgh. If you're over uh, in that direction, especially. Um, and so I had the opportunity again, just taking some video stuff as as the reporter was doing what what, what we we're doing. So we got to take a ride. Now, what's going to happen when this guy pulls up? And it'll probably pull up automatically, uh, 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 autonomously. autonomously. Um, as it did for us. So we're, we're sitting there and, and we're waiting for it to come up. And uh, and uh, it's driving up. And then, then you know, the person said, it's like, that's driving up to us now on its own. Like, it's, it's on its way, on its own, right? Um, and it was really cool. Um, there's always, there's going to be, for now, two people in the car, in the front. And there's going to be a little notice of, uh, you know, don't don't bring your family. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring more than two people. Don't bring a bunch of luggage or anything like that. I kind of imagine, I almost asked this while I was there, but I kind of imagine there's a lot of hardware in the trunk for this thing mm-hmm. to help support all the hardware that's going on. Um, and uh, and it was really cool. It was really cool. The guy is has his hands on, like, on the wheel, but, like, light on the wheel, you know? Like, in uh, uh, and there's another guy with a laptop that's that's tied into everything. By the way, I noticed when I look back at the footage, running Ubuntu. 
Um, <laughs> and it's it shows all of the information that the car, basically what the car is seeing. Like this box, oh, there's a box here for this parked car. There's a box here. He pointed out one point, and it's like, if you see these yellow cars, we're over on Penn Avenue. And, you know, we're at a light, and there's some cars around us. There's some behind us, too. But the yellow ones were the ones that basically the car is looking at, okay, watch what those ones are doing in case we need to react to it. And you saw one that was like probably a pass about halfway point of the car. And it was grayed out. And it was like, well, if that one moves, there's nothing we can do about it. So it's not, uh, there's, they're not taking concern with it, right? Um, there were a few odd things. Like there's a box truck just parked, you know, in a lane on Penn Avenue. And it, the car basically interpreted it as like, well, this car is like stopped. We're just waiting for it to go. It doesn't know that it's actually parked there, right? So mm. they had to take over and drive around it in that point. There was probably about two or three times where they had to take over. Um, sometimes, like with a pedestrian, like they were, uh, we were over by by the convention center, and there was a pedestrian crossing, and we we're trying to make a right turn, and they just took over just to be safe. And mm-hmm. they were like, like normally we kind of just let it see what it would do, you know, and uh, you know, kind of thing. And and but you know, they just kind of taken over to, you know, kind of not hang out downtown. Like stopped, you mm-hmm. know. At one point, we we got to see a little bit of uh, three way, four way stops, and how it behaves. It it does the four way stop rules and tries to abide by that, and looks at you know how the other cars are moving and and tries to interpret that. We did get the one stop where it took a while to figure out what it wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> little things like that. Um, so so obviously it's not perfect, you know, and it's going to be well before it is. But but as much as it handled on its own, was really impressive. They actually let the reporter get behind the wheel, um, and she was very, <laughs> she was a little hands off of the wheel, like more so sitting there. And we're like kind of on a back street, so it wasn't like so big of a deal. Um, and uh, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty, pretty cool. Um, there's a little screen that's going to be in the back, and they have a fun little selfie button and everything for you to take. And it does, it, you know, it has your account and everything being an Uber. And I'll probably tweet it out or something with the hashtag self driving Uber or something like that. Uh, from the looks of things. And even on the dash in the back, you'll get the information about your drive, but you also get a rendition, a version of like what the car sees, like the guy sees on the laptop. It's not as detailed as what the guy does on the laptop. It's more of a, um, it's more of like kind of a heat map in mm-hmm. comparison when I was looking at it. Uh, so, so it was pretty cool. And, and when you look at it, the, the dash doesn't look too much different. There's an in-dash display that has all the GPS information and everything. As you would normally see it, normally see in a higher end Uber, just mm-hmm. you know, it's it's Uber software running, right? Uh, they're mapping, they're everything, right? Um, do, do, but, you, do you think that over time is the theory that they could actually get more people in a car because they could actually fill the driver's seat? Well, let me get to that. Let me get okay. Uh, sorry. Let me, let me let me get to that. Uh, let me get to why they're here before I get to that because there's there's some other things that leads to. So why did they pick Pittsburgh? Obviously, the town's here, right? They called it a double black diamond. And I think this is a car term or something as far as... It's a ski term. Is it a ski term? Yeah. You, like the, usually when you talk about double black diamonds for skiing, it's okay. a completely complex hill that you're going to die on. Unless you're an experienced <laughs> skier. Welcome to <laughs> Pittsburgh. Welcome to Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, so basically, like, between the way the roads are, and the weather that you have to deal with and the road conditions, like we have all the extreme stuff that they want. Now they were showing, and I'm sure this will come up with the articles that are, that are releasing by the time this is out there too. Um, we've heard about the Volvo that they're working with, a, a modified Volvo. Mm-hmm. Um, I was mistaken because I thought that, that that's what they were rolling out with, but that's actually a down the line. Now that is a bigger vehicle. That is a basically a truck, right? And of course, and the guy behind... Um, Auto was it? Auto? Not auto. It sounds like auto. The, the guys that were doing the automated trucks that we talked about okay. ages ago, they got they got bought out by Uber. The, the founder of that was actually there speaking. Okay. Um, so they're working with Volvo for a more integrated thing. So you've seen the giant thing on top of the the current Ford Fusions that you see around town, right? This is like less sensors, but they do all the same things. You know, they what, what they referred it to. The one you see now is the desktop model, and the Volvo is the laptop model. Okay. And the next one they hope to so- show us will be the smartphone. Okay. Of these things. So, do, how did it deal with like stoplights and stuff? I know you said four way stops, but 
stoplights were it reads the stoplight I, I i think so this is the other interesting thing um it seems that because I, I asked about like you know what what is you know uh, what was stop signs i don't have a stop sign at the end of my road right uh, it, it seems that the the stop signs are are digital, like they they put say there's a stop sign here. Behave for this stop sign. Behave for this stop line, mm-hmm. for instance. Like like everything seems to be digitally mapped out, not physically. I'm looking for a physical stop sign. Okay. Um, I think there is a one discussion on when they were talking about the technical details was uh, uh, it sees in black and white, basically. That's a problem for stoplights. So there, I think there's another sensor that does read that, if I recall. So so it does see that. It, it does see that and reacts to it. Um, um, it sounds like uh, uh, it will determine when the yellow light hits if it can make it safely. You know, things like that. Like, And I thought that was really, really interesting. So when you're riding in it, it's you you also get that feeling you know not being behind the wheel myself or anything like that you know when your cruise control takes over and you get a little bit of a rev because maybe mm-hmm. it's like in between things and it, like i felt a lot of that okay i felt like um some of the stops seemed a little quicker and again it's reacting to things but it it the response time for anything i noticed there's a point where we're stopped at um um, the on ramp over at the 31st Street Bridge, like one of those off ones that comes off that that kind of trail road over by the Heinz plants, it they, it uh it uh it uh we stopped. There's a car in front of us at the light, and the guy actually gets out of his car, like he got out of an SUV to like like slam the door in the back or something because maybe it wasn't open or something. And we felt the car kind of jump back, like I felt like in response to him jumping out of his car. You know, and I I don't know if it was like entirely related or anything like that. It was but. it was taking evasive maneuvers. It was making sure yeah. you were protected. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. So um, I I I I know a lot of people are kind of fearing like, oh, what's it going to be like to get into something like this? Um, but it felt um, it felt right. You know, it felt safe. It felt fine. You got two people in there. You know, and well, uh, and we didn't really talk about intentions, you know, or anything like that. I didn't feel like it was the place for that, anyways. I mean, we're, we're in there with the engineers and you know people working with this, but um, it feels like at this point, yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, the end game later on down the road is going to be we basically replace the drivers, right? Or maybe we replace a lot of them in a lot of the situations, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so no matter what the insurance and everything else and the technology overhead is, if that means they're cutting out a giant bit of the questions and the overhead on having human drivers in other places, then that's definitely something they need to play forward to. It's, a, it's a, I think it's a good gamble on their part. It's a long game because this isn't going to be... And maybe it is. Maybe there will just always be a driver behind the wheel. But if that driver can do longer days because of this, I don't know. Is that are there laws around that? Because I even I don't know. The the the, the game still being played, yeah. still being written on this one, right? Um, but I, I can imagine a lot of advantages to something like that. You know, it, it's it seems like, um, yeah, it seems like that 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 kind of opens you up for a lot of stuff. Oh hell, the guy came from doing trucking. Right. And, and the mm-hmm. idea was, let's do this safely so there can be a little bit more hours on the road to get that stuff, be a little more efficient with it. Right. And uh, but yeah, felt really good about it. I thought it was a really good experience. Um, really interesting to see their kind of uh, layout. Um, and again, it's a Ford Fusion, so it's a hybrid. So it's electric, you know. Uh, so so again, kind of solving the other problem, too. I wonder, I wonder will the car... If they ever get to the day where there's no driver, will the car sense that it's low on fuel and ask one of the people that it's taking somewhere, like, will it pull into a gas station and say, could you please get out and pump the gas? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's going to be a little yeah. robot arm that comes out from there, you know? I, I think I think that's going to be... That's going to be it. But, I mean, also the other idea is this idea we're already ride-sharing, car-sharing... By the way, um, the day before this, as, and, and it seemed like kind of an omen for this thing that I didn't know I was going to do yet. I saw a zip car get in an accident down the strip uh, just a few blocks away from where I ended up. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, I maybe kind of worry, wonder about how that works out. But um, but yeah, uh, uh, I, you know, it's kind of that thing where you know you just I don't own a car. Nobody drives to get me. I, I, yeah, I think it's eventually. Hey, I need a car to get to this place, and one is parked somewhere and comes and gets me. And you know, well, I wonder if it can streamline. Like if you, can, we, we were talking about this at work, and you know, it's getting to the point where your Ubers and your Lyfts are on par with the cost of coming into work. From a, from a, by the time you pay for gas, parking, um, time, etc. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's definitely on. It's it's getting to the point where it's on par. So could could you cost effectively just say, I'm going to do a standing 7 a.m. pickup. Mm-hmm. And I'll let you know when I need picked up in the afternoon and they come and pick you up. They take you to work and think about it. If you could orchestrate all the lane changes and light changes and everything else of everyone coming in at rush hour time, I'm and gridlocks. I mean, you could more efficiently get people into work mm-hmm. quicker. So, so it's definitely I'm, I'm definitely interested to see where they go with this be interesting so we'll have that again look for the articles and of course i'll have some footage out there apparently apparently via mashable i know the video editors were taking care of that today so uh which is kind of cool um so look out for that um so we had a new kind of idea so there's a lot of stories we didn't get to we had plenty to talk about and we have plenty of stories to talk about so let's run them down uh first of all uh, i'm very excited and didn't get a chance to talk about this last week either Oh no, I forget what it was called now. Uh Z- Zam Zang Basket? Zap Basket? Z- is it Zip Basket? I've never heard oh, of this. Oh no. Oh no. It's a tisket a tasket. Oh no. Pittsburgh Grocery Delivery. Oh, I did see you talking about this. Yes, I did two of these this week. And now I can't remember the name of it. Um in the meantime, uh Chilla, let, let us know stories that you did not get to this week. So um, the first one being, so we talked about iMessage earlier. Circle is a company that does kind of online device-to-device, person-to-person electronic payments. Circle is going to integrate their application into iMessage. So I will actually be able to text you money. Um, I think this is really cool. Uh, Recently, um, different family members, we've been kind of pitching in for birthday gifts or or Father's Day gifts or whatever. and then I gotta write a check. I gotta put it in the mail. It's I can't get I can't get the normals to all get PayPal accounts or to do like some kind of crazy Venmo. Um, if I could text them this money, that would be totally awesome. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Google's bringing their VR photo app into iOS, um, so you'll be able to take all your your kind of cardboard based photos for for Google VR. I'm sure this is due to um, the daydream devices probably coming out shortly um we covered the note 7 and chromecast has recently set up an early adopter early access program um so if you want to be like sorg and get ios updates early Mm -hmm. and you have a chromecast and you want to do that too you can um get early early updates and preview as part of their preview program for for chromecast i thought that was pretty cool um definitely looking forward to hopefully some refreshed chromecast hardware in the future Indeed, and also also interested. In that. It's called Zing Basket, by the way. If you're in, a, especially the South Hills, I got at groceries in like 20 minutes. I read the next Pittsburgh article, and within the hour, I had groceries. It was awesome. Three dollar surcharge, um, unless it's over 50 bucks. Uh, now the next question: Do I tip them? I think I'm supposed to. I did not. I'm going to next time. But now I have to have cash again. Same problem I had with uh. Uber. You know what I mean? So it's like, ah, what do I do here? Do I just make sure I have a couple? I don't know. Then I don't want to order because I'm like, I don't know. It's that awkward thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens if they drop your eggs? If they drop my eggs? Well, that's another thing. They don't get tipped. That's for sure. The retro USB AVS childhood Nintendo does really cool things. Check it out. It, 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 it's supposed to make them look better and without all the problems it's been with other uh, kind of NES non-official Nintendo cartridge takers. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Retro USB AVS. Also, your uh, tweets, will, Twitter tweets will be longer as of September nineteenth. Looking forward to that. Had a few things I just had to rework to make them fit in there to promote some stuff for phone. Ah! 
And also, uh, Engadget has a pretty cool article about the best places to buy and sell used iPhones, which I recommend for you guys that are not on the tip top of the hardware. Listen, man, an iPhone 6 is just as good as anything else. Save yourself some bucks if you want to be in the iPhone ecosystem. So with that, Chilla, as well, you know, uh, we got the pod crawl coming up September 30th. We have Boot Camp Pittsburgh. I'm going to be talking intro to podcasting over at the Carnegie Library in Beachview. Go check that out, Pod Camp Pittsburgh on the Facebook and uh, Meetup. We have a, a, a posting for that, too. That's uh, September 21st at 6 p.m. And also the, there's an N64 tournament coming up. Uh, at looking for group look for that over in the wrestling mayhem show facebook group so with that chilla at chilla Google, tech google's coming out with an announcement on oh, o- the eight, october 3rd i thought it was the 8th, 8th, 8th? 4th, something like that it the 84th yes the 80 october 84th october 84th. tune in then yes uh chilla's at chilla tech.net that's where you can find me chilla on the twitters john chill on the facebook's John Chilla with my face, not the other John Chilla face on LinkedIn. And of course, Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Oh, Sorgatron Media Coffee is coming up October 1st at Work Hard Pittsburgh. If you're in the Pittsburgh area and you want to meet an awesome caster, I'm there. Chilla's there a lot. I'll be there. Chilla will be there. So hang with the awesome casters. Krauss has been there a lot. I think he's already marked as coming. So, uh, so go check it out. And some other cool, creative people. Check it out there. Awesomecast.net, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Did you say have something chilla? I was just say it's the fourth. It's the fourth. Google four, they're the saying fourth. four products on the fourth. There you go. Thank you so much to our awesome tr- chat room that we had to kick out because we were talking about something we're not allowed to put out yet uh, as of this recording. Um, thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.